Hey, Hi, how are you? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good. This is my first ever uh, Instagram live. <laughs> and I, I just moved back to New York City yesterday and I don't have a mm-hmm. tripod for my phone. So you're stacked mm-hmm. on top of a bunch of DVDs I never watch and could fall at, if I you could fall at any moment. Was <laughs> I'm on a laptop right now, like literally linked up, trying to make sure I'm like even as Beautiful. well. So you're good. We're we're good. <laughs> we're gonna do our best. Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are I'm, you? Sorry. I'm doing all right. Where where are you? Um, where are you calling from? Uh, Houston. Amazing. Houston, Texas. That's awesome. I'm gonna yes. try to move this down a little bit. Just maneuver my DVDs pile. To... <laughs> Um, I feel like that's stable. We'll see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> if you fall at any moment, I know <laughs> it's because of your phone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, um, yes. So, um, how does it feel to be now in the Marvel Universe? And even though your character died, but how does it feel with everyone knowing your character and having to keep it for like over maybe a year now of like not no one no one knowing how does it feel yeah i mean it's it's been really exciting it's been um the whole thing was a huge surprise and i i mean i like a surprise in my life and in my career and mm-hmm. it's wild to just feel like i'm an actor who auditions for jobs and sometimes gets them and all of a sudden this one job i happen to get sort of like plopped me down into this completely wild universe, if you will, um, Mm -hmm. with these amazing people and these amazing fans and these awesome, creative, um, phenomenal people. I I feel so lucky and I feel so thankful, but it is, um, it's its own kind of whirlwind that's been really exciting. (laughs) Did you know about the role like before you auditioned or did you have a sense of what the character knowing what you were going to be stepping into I had a really small sense I got for the audition it was not an audition for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier the audition said it was for untitled Marvel project number five or something like that I didn't Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was a tv show or a movie um and the scene that I had to do for the audition the character didn't have a name it just said doctor and the scene for the audition was a very sort of generalized version of what you see on the show. So there were no Mm -hmm. identifying details. There were no names, like no one, all the other characters had fake names. And so I had a little bit of an idea of what it was, but, um, but not, not much of anything. I, and then when I got the job, I mean, probably about a month later, got an email fully out of the blue that said, we have an offer for, untitled Marvel number four. And I still didn't know what it was. It wasn't until someone sent me my script pages and I emailed that person. The, 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 they sent me the official script pages and I emailed that person back and I said, can you tell me what this project is? I, I really don't know anything. And, and they very graciously wrote back and said, this is a TV series called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Kari Skoglund is directing it. Um, so yeah, it was the whole thing. It's been, it's been sort of like layers of secrecy that get sort of more and more shed as time goes. Because even with it being a secret, like over the year and everything, even you have to, you can tell anyone like you have to like keep it like closed mouth because you have to like not tell your family at all. I told my family and my friends. I mean, oh, okay. I, I, I think you t- I think you tell those people, you know. Yeah. don't say anything or don't you do, I mean you don't tell them major plot spoilers or anything mm-hmm. um but I mean you also you don't get a full script and so even if I wanted to spoil things for people I really couldn't <laughs> what was it like walking on your first day of set like was it did everyone welcome you with open arms or did you feel like oh okay I need to be in this bubble you know, just being on set with everyone. Yeah, I was sort of immediately welcomed with open arms, which I did not anticipate. You you never know exactly what to expect when you're showing up to a whole new set. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, 
and I've <laughs> I've I've mostly had wonderful experiences, but you are always mm -hmm. a little bit bracing yourself because you can show up and even if it's a great group of people, it can be a really tense day or you know, they could be running behind and people get cranky or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I did something smart that I don't usually do, not really on purpose, mm -hmm. but on my, my first day was just a wardrobe fitting. And it was at like mm -hmm. six or seven in the morning. It was really, really early. And I was just sort of thinking to myself, like, I don't have anything else to do today. And so I asked at the fitting, I said, you know, is there any way once we're done, is there any way I can just go watch on set and just see what they're shooting? Because my fitting was not far away mm -hmm. from the set at all. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, f I figured I could just like sit in the corner by myself and not talk to anybody, but just get a sense of the flow of things. And it's nice to get some mm -hmm. idea of how a director works before you actually have to work with them. Um, mm -hmm. And so they said, yeah, cool, go. Uh, once the fitting is done, they'd be happy to have you go watch. And again, I expected to be in the corner with no one talking to me. And Kari, who directed mm -hmm. the whole series, as soon as I got onto the set, mm -hmm. She was like, we're so excited you're here. And she introduced <laughs> me to everyone. And she's like, this is the guy who's playing the doctor starting tomorrow. <laughs> and she had me like sit with her in her director's tent. Like all day I stayed for a while. Um, wow. And she and she really explained how things had been going. Getting, I got to watch mm -hmm. how she likes to work. I got to learn some people's mm -hmm. names. So that when I showed up, mm -hmm. it wasn't just like, this mass of a huge cast and crew that I'd never met before. And so I, it was really impressive to me. Um, again, just how, like you said, right off the bat, mm -hmm. every single person made me feel like I was family. That's very good. Cause even when you're in the scene of, you know, with the doctor and the monologue, like, was it, you have to like pull for something or did you like do a little bit of research just to like figure out like his background of him being in the blips and then him come, reappearing, was there like any research you had to like figure out to make sure, okay, this is the character, this is how I'm gonna portray him on Yeah, I, I did a little bit. I mean, I, as soon as I saw the the cartoon or the comic book rendering of Dr. Nagel mm -hmm. and saw mm -hmm. that he looks absolutely nothing like me at all, I felt like we kind of had the freedom at that point. I felt like I had the freedom to sort of create my own version of him mm -hmm. whereas if he had looked exactly like me in the comics I maybe would have dug a little deeper into you know how does he stand what are his expressions mm -hmm. to try to maybe replicate something but I mm -hmm. knew enough about the MCU also to know that those comics are just sort of a jumping off point for a lot of these stories mm -hmm. and that scene especially that long monologue you mentioned mm -hmm. gives a lot of clues as to you know, he talks a lot about where he's been and people he's worked with and things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think the majority of my work was just sort of trying to fill out like, okay, he mentions that this happened. What did that feel like? What did it look like? He mentions this person. What does he think of that person? Mm -hmm. Just trying to sort of give myself as much of a history as I could so that I wasn't just like reciting random bullet points, but Mm -hmm. that hopefully it was like filled out with something deeper because mm -hmm. now that even though he died do you think he could come back somehow maybe in another show or another part of the you know with the movie yeah now? I mean I think he could come back whether any whether anyone in charge agrees with me or not is is certainly mm -hmm. up for debate but um mm -hmm. but yeah I mean I don't think anyone is ever dead in the Marvel Cinematic Universe no. <laughs> and, and I also think like if anyone in the world could have come up with, you know, some shield against death, some sort of preemptive potion to take or something, mm. it is mm. obviously Dr. Wilfred Nagel and, or even a flashback. I mean, I would love nothing more than to see a flashback with Dr. Wilfred Nagel and Stanley Tucci as Erskine. That would make me feel like all of my dreams had come true. Because <laughs> you mentioned that you were, that you've seen part of the Marvel Universe. Do you have like a favorite character or were you like really familiar with how Marvel worked even before booking this guy? I was a little bit familiar. I was not hugely familiar. Um, but right before the Falcon and the Winter Soldier aired, though, I did watch all of WandaVision. And um, 
Love that Same. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm a long time Catherine Hahn fan. I'm I mm-hmm. I go where she goes, and um, <laughs> and so yeah. I mean, if if I had if I had a favorite character, I think that you know she's she's pretty high on the list. Yeah, because she played that role. I like watching that back, <laughs> and you just like watching how it goes. How at the end, no spoilers, but if you haven't watched it, you should definitely definitely check yeah. it out. <laughs> Because you have played on, like, you know, Clean Sugar, mm-hmm. The Center, Manifest. What guest star role do you really hope that you can get or you could become a series regular on? Oh, wow. Um, on different shows, you mean? Not on... Yes. Um, no, no. If you want, like, no. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are so many. There are so many. Uh, I mean, we're in... The, there's never been better television than there is now. Um I watched all of Better Things in about a week during the lockdown. Yeah. Have you watched that? Yes, a little bit. Some of it. I'm still like working on a few episodes. Yeah, yeah. I I was so blown away by what she does on that show. And so if I could, mm-hmm. if I could even just sort of like show up for you know four lines or something, that would that like I I think every episode of that I think is just golden. And um, mm-hmm. the other thing, the other two things, the other two that came to mind, um, I am uh, Rebecca, who's on Better Things, is saying, um, is is saying aw yay, which I will now take to be an offer of employment. Um, well, you heard it here first. <laughs> I, we're breaking news here on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> um, Rebecca's unbelievable on Better Things because every single person on it is is mind blowing to me. Um, and then, and, and the other two that came to mind are, I, um, I mean, I'm a big succession fan, like everyone else in the world. And that would be dream of dreams. And then one of my, one of my best friends is the lead of High Town on stars. I don't know if you've watched that. Um, isn't that it show. so good? Yeah, um, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, M- M- Monica has been one of my best friends since we were 15 years old. I love Monica since like mm-hmm. Chicago Fire, and then like I'm so glad that she had this show. Like, and I isn't and isn't that performance just mind blowing? Every episode, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I cried the last episode, the second to last episode with sorry spoilers when you know uh-huh. when, um yep. her friend mm-hmm. overdosed, and I was like, why did he die the first I season? <laughs> I, like, I know, and so <laughs> I I also just feel like that character needs a good friend on that show. And and if, if I could just be, you know, a, a helpful, sober companion or something. Um, she was going through it each episode. No, <laughs> like, and I'm, okay. I'm so nervous that this second season is just going to be even harder for her. But I, like, oh. but I, I think that show is crazy good. And it's also shot by the cinematographer who I did The Sinner with. Um, cool. And so I'd love to work with him again and... Yeah, those uh, those are the first three shows that came to mind. <laughs> was there a moment in your career that you felt that you wasn't sure about acting anymore, or were during the pandemic? Like a lot of times, a lot of I've seen a lot of actors move back home mm-hmm. and just kind of start regular jobs and not get back into Hollywood. Has there been a moment in your time in your career during this past year, or just in general, where you felt that? you wasn't too sure where the direction it was leading to. Yeah, I mean, I I think that that's, you know, I I think being an actor is hard for everybody. And, and I think that even sometimes when you're working, it can still be incredibly challenging. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I've, I've certainly had a lot of ups and downs. I've had a lot of periods of time where I feel like I can't get a job to save my life or, or what can be even worse sometimes are the periods where you feel like you're almost getting a lot of jobs. You're getting to the final mm-hmm. two or three people or whatever time and again, and then just none of them work out. And, um, mm-hmm. and I've been through a lot of stretches like that. I, I think most actors in the world have been. Um, mm-hmm. And it's interesting. I mean, I've, I've, never, I've never doubted how much I love it. And that has always been the thing that I think has kept me going, even when there have been incredibly painful, not short stretches of time. And and during those times, I've definitely, you know, gone, is there anything else I can come up with um, that I could do with my life? And um, for good or for bad, nothing else has shoved up. 
<laughs> but but yeah, I mean, I've, I've certainly had plenty of time where um, where you know I've I've wondered if it's actually the right thing to do, or you know, sometimes a well-meaning friend or family member has gone. You know, maybe it's time to think about something else. But um, those are also oftentimes the moments where a job shows up. You know three days later or something like that and you feel it or an important callback or something and you go well I guess we're we're still in the game for now because <laughs> you know with you saying you being back in New York um even though Broadway hasn't you know started back up do you see yourself when it eventually does start back up you know doing audition for more plays or trying to get back into the Broadway scene more I would love to yeah I mean I, I think it's so it feels so nebulous right now like what that will actually look like in so many ways. But um, you mean right before the pandemic shutdown, I was saying to my agents, I was saying I would really love to find a theater job again. And um, I was really feeling like it was time to get back to it and then everything <laughs> shut down. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, I feel that itch even more now and you know, th th maybe getting to be a part of something that's one of the first things to come back would be so exciting. But also if, if I'm just an enthusiastic audience member for the first things that come back, that will be great too. I'm, I'm you know, I've, I'm trying to be hopeful and optimistic that we're getting on the right track here, slowly but surely. Have you felt that you want to see a play? Is there a particular play that you want to see come to Broadway that you would love to audition for or that you want to see from, oh, wow. you know, script to screen? Yeah. Or script to play? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so interesting because so much of the theater that I've done has been new plays or new musicals. And so I, th I think what that has, that sort of trained my brain in a slightly different way because... I don't really have like a list anymore of like, I want to play that part and I want to play that part. I think my list now in terms of everything, but especially theater is much more about people that I would love to work with on whatever their next project is, as opposed to saying, you know, I, I want to play King Lear or something like that, um, which I would love to do 40 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think much more about you know, whatever, whatever Annie Baker's next play is, or whatever Terrell Alvin McCraney's next play, like, like, I feel like I have, mm -hmm. those lists are in my head a little more than, mm -hmm. like, how badly I want to do the next revival of whatever. Because mm -hmm. I could definitely see, you know, Zoe's extraordinary play. Uh-huh. I don't know what you would do, but I would just, I, 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 I auditioned <laughs> unsuccessfully over the summer for that show. <laughs> I would love to though. My my friend Ashley just played the the fortune teller on this week's episode. Okay. Um cuz you can you said that you audition how did the audition go? It was it. I think it was okay. Oh. I think it was fine. Like I think um I did the best that I could and um <laughs> you know, it was fine. Cuz what's one piece of a What's one uh, thing you've learned since acting and, you know, on this journey that has shaped you or just, you know, made you think outside the box when it comes to something? That's so interesting. Um, in terms of auditioning or in terms of, like... Um, auditioning or just in general, you know, just being with you know different stages of your life right now you know from where you guest start your first audition to where you are now yeah one thing I've learned through that I mean I, I mm -hmm. think that it the great thing about show business um I and I think especially growing up doing theater is I, I do think that all of the lessons apply in all of the rest of your life because you're learning you're learning about teamwork, you're learning about creativity, you're learning about problem solving, um, you're learning resilience as we've discussed. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think all of that comes in handy, um, comes in handy in all different ways. Um, it, it's funny because I, I think every once in a while someone will say like, you know, my kid wants to be in the theater, that's so scary to me or something like that. And, mm -hmm. um, 
and you know, I fully understand and empathize with the horror of that. But um, mm-hmm. but I also feel a little like let them like it's 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 an amazing education for that reason that all of the lessons you learn sort of like uh, spread out through the rest of your life. That's a very general answer exactly. to your very good question. Um, <laughs> okay, I, under- I understand from where you- we're from what you're saying. Because it is, it, I get what you're coming from completely. Because even when you book the, the role of the doctor mm-hmm. in, you know, Paukelo and his soldier, did you feel like hearing the news that you got it were you prepared like oh okay I feel like I did great but I don't know too sure but when somebody you know the email came or the call came when you got it were you just like super excited or were you just like okay I got it you know um, my <laughs> friend Melanie who is I believe on this live right now because I told her that I needed a friend to be here um I, I <laughs> if she's still on here she will say that she was in my apartment right over there when I got the email. And I, I, was, mm. I was pretty shocked because I, I sent off the audition tape um, and didn't feel great about it. I mean, I, the next morning, for, I, I remember being rushed for some reason. I can't remember if I was working on something else or what was going on, but I sent off the mm. audition tape and felt like, um, like felt like deep shame about it. I sort of felt like that was a really good opportunity and you, what you mm-hmm. sent is probably not good enough. And so then to get the job was, was a really big surprise. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy that Melanie who just chimed in was here to see it because, um, because also sometimes, oftentimes when you're auditioning for something, you do, there is a sort of like middle step where you'll audition and 80% of the time, probably you'll get an email or a phone call that says that went really well. There's some interest or, you know, you're in the last couple people they're considering or whatever. And there was nothing on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And so I Mm -hmm. sent that tape, felt bad about myself about it. And then like a month later, fully out of the blue, got the offer. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was a big surprise. And, and I, w- I was excited about it. But again, it was, it was sort of excitement in stages because I didn't know what job I had gotten for such a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you have to keep everything. Well, they, they didn't tell you right off the bat. So you just have to like, so you got there on set. They just literally, that's when they finally told you, like, okay, here's your, what you're playing. Here's what you're doing. Well, it was like no preparation. I, that, I got just... the script pages a couple days in advance, but um, mm-hmm. but not very far in advance. And so I had my work cut out for me, um, especially with that that big those a couple of big speeches, and even even mm-hmm. though it's split up in the episode into like four or five different segments, we shot it all as like one mm-hmm. long thing every time. Mm-hmm. And so um, so yeah, I, I did. I did eventually learn what was happening, but it did take a little bit of time. I actually thought I'd gotten cast in WandaVision because as, as soon as I got the job, I Googled what else, like what Marvel had in production at that moment. And mm-hmm. WandaVision was directed by Matt Shackman, who runs the Geffen Playhouse in Los Angeles, which is this great theater mm-hmm. that I've almost worked at a couple of times. And so I mm-hmm. invented this story for myself that you know my audition tape crossed his desk and he was like oh I know who that is I'll cast him um and Mm -hmm. I was completely incorrect about that because when you when you thought I was the Falcon and Winter Soldier were you like man oh I thought this was WandaVision but you know hey here yeah I I was excited about being in WandaVision I'd I'd texted I texted a friend of mine who'd worked with Elizabeth Olsen to get the scoop on that like Mm -hmm. I had I'd been doing my one division research, and then it was like, "Great, yeah. you're so wrong." Oh, so you so you search for every yes. thing before. Totally, <laughs> yeah, that is one hundred percent incorrect. Oh my goodness! So when you after you found out that you weren't in the one division, <laughs> did you did you calm down and was like, "Okay, well, maybe I know someone that's on." Did you know like specifically anyone on set before you were actually? Um, able to work with any like Anthony or Sebastian no one you never met no I mean the the nice thing is that after a certain point we've all been doing this long enough that we have friends in common or 
Sebastian had just worked on something with a director that I also know really well. Like there's a, you, you can usually find some sort of link after a certain point, but, um, mm-hmm. but I hadn't met any of them before. It was a 100% new group of people. Meeting them, was it, were you anxious? Were you nervous? Were you like a, a little bit, I know you said that you had welcome arms on set, but like meeting them, you know, the Falcon, <laughs> the Winter Soldier, was it like a big, you know, kid moment like oh my god like this is who they play on you know Avengers or anything like that you know I don't think so only because I didn't know enough to to know I mean I've I've seen them both I've all all the four Mm -hmm. actors I worked with I worked with Anthony and Sebastian Mm -hmm. and Emily and Daniel and I've I've seen all Mm -hmm. of them in so many things um Mm -hmm. and so um so yeah, I I didn't have that moment really. I think I think I had a version of that moment when I saw the sets because the sets were gigantic and gorgeous and mm-hmm. the day that I watched them film was the shipyard fight that Emily does and that shipyard was like the size mm-hmm. of a football field. And yeah. I'm so used like so much of shooting in New York is like borrowing the back room of a bookstore for three hours and you have to give Mm -hmm. it back immediately at four and hope that like some Mm -hmm. irate customer doesn't come in and scream at everybody and so I I think Mm -hmm. the moment that I really was blown away was with the sets and the wardrobe and that whole part of it and when when it came to being with the other actors I was excited to be with them and I think they're phenomenal But um, Mm. that felt like this is maybe the part I'm most comfortable with is just acting with people. Have you been watching the episodes Mm -hmm. now? Like even though, okay, okay. Yeah, it's (laughs) unbelievable. It's crazy Mm. how gorgeous that show is. Mm. Like when you saw your episode, Mm -hmm. did you have like a little watch party or you just like had your little friends or somebody over just to kind of like watch this this show? I didn't because we're, you know, I, I wasn't in New York, which is where I usually live mm-hmm. when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, my my best friend did sort of insist that we have a little Zoom event. And so a, a couple of friends, uh, you know, we had a teeny little like Zoom get together that night, which has been one. I mean, it's been one of the funny things about this moment is that this is really exciting and it's been so cool. Um, mm-hmm. But um I'm also still just like in my pajamas and you know, that there's no, usually typically when something like this happens, you get to go to a thing or um, mm-hmm. I bet I would have gotten to go to a rap party at least, but mm-hmm. we're all just sort of texting each other. <laughs> and <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a very unglamorous, glamorous time. <laughs> Cause even with the start of the pandemic and, you know, with everything going on still now how do you feel going back onto sets is it kind of different or is it a different vibe you know with you know wearing masks and you know just protection and you know having a certain amount of people on on set yeah I I actually haven't been yet so I'm 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 interested and excited to see I mean it seems like now from what I've heard from friends of mine it seems like there's you know people know the systems now and it's not quite such an experiment I did shoot, mm-hmm. I did an episode of Genji Cohen's quarantine series that she made for Netflix um, mm-hmm. last summer. And so that's actually the only set that I've mm-hmm. been on, which is my mom's living room. And like my mom <laughs> and I constructed the set for that show. And I also did the sound and the lighting and all of that. But um, so I've, I've, I went from, you know, the largest set in the world with Marvel to the teeniest scrappiest little thing because how was that trying to do that and then record and then was like they had to record you or you recorded yourself or i i also operated the camera (laughs) um they 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 sent everything i mean they they sent i think like 22 boxes of all Mm -hmm. kinds of equipment and that was um that was a frightening moment i think for all of us when those boxes showed up at our homes because we Mm -hmm. uh you know, we, we were told, obviously, like, you'll be sent camera equipment and all this stuff. But I think nobody anticipated, oh, you're sending us the real equipment. And we have to <laughs> figure out how to do it all by ourselves. <laughs> and um, and my cast for my episode was, we were also the first episode to shoot. And so we were, 
I think the sort of, you know, guinea pigs for how the whole season would go. But I, I remember the next day mm-hmm. on Zoom, you know, Oscar Nunez and Guillermo Diaz and all of us just sort of being like, mm-hmm. how in the world are we supposed to uh, put all of this stuff together? I ended up thinking it was fun. Cause but... I... Oh, because I was going to say, was it fun just to try to see how people, like how you navigate the camera and how people sit there and record stuff? Like, was it a learning experience for you to, you know, you know, being in front of the camera to like now being behind and in front of totally. the camera? Totally, yeah. I mean, it, it ended, like once I like plugged everything in the right way, which was its own mm. like two and a half hour process, um, <laughs> Uh, it ended up being really fun. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. learning how to put my own mic pack together. And um, mm-hmm. and it did feel a little bit crazy because you're used to on set shooting something and then you have downtime while camera people mm-hmm. are doing their job or lighting people are doing their job. And in this particular mm-hmm. instance, you had no downtime because you were also all of those people. And so you would shoot a take and one of the people who, um, you know, is responsible for the sound or something would say, actually, can you go check the mic levels of whatever? Or we actually need to focus the camera in a different way. And so it was a bit of a marathon because you would shoot a take, someone would need you to correct something in one of the other areas. Mm -hmm. You would go back to shooting. But I I think it also maybe helped our performances a little bit to you can't, you can't really overthink anything at that point because you're trying to do 14 people's jobs. <laughs> Just to sit there and like try to film that yourself and then make sure that you're filming it the right way and making sure that, you know, it's recording or, you know, just having all that equipment for one person, then you just realize how much people do on a regular mm-hmm. day basis. Because it could be a lot. <laughs> totally. And and just how there's a, and I've always known this, but it's firsthand experience now that like, oh, I know nothing about how ex- exactly <laughs> what the sound crew is doing or exactly what the camera mm-hmm. crew is doing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just have even more respect. Did it make you want to, did it make you want to learn more about how people operate behind the, behind the camera more? Yeah, and I've I've always been interested for sure. And before mm-hmm. the pandemic, I was a friend of mine who runs a TV show. I was watching him edit it, and I was learning how that process works. Um, I've I've definitely always been interested, and yeah, it, it was fun to have to have to learn very quickly. Because one of the big things that I think I've seen people do is like do that. Do you have to do that ADR mm-hmm. in like your closet or you have to? Uh huh. <laughs> I did that for Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> they sent. Uh, oh, you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> yeah, they they sent a whole kit. You, you... Oh, and you had to like do it all by yourself. But because I had done social distance, they said they were mm-hmm. like, "We'll set up a Zoom call with you to like hook up all of the microphones and all of the mm-hmm. things." And um, and I said I was like I actually think I can do it, and um, and I successfully did. I um, I felt mm-hmm. really proud of myself. Because even with social distance, you had to do the ADR by yourself too, or it was just uh, camera. Operated? I think I didn't have to do ADR for that. I think some other people mm-hmm. did, but I didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just learning that you had to do that all like how the world is now with you know filming and stuff. How do you feel going towards the future? Do you feel like we're going to be doing, you know, how you did the ADR at your home? Are you, do you feel like it's going to be like that for the next couple of years? I wonder. I mean, I, I definitely think that everyone's goal is to get back to in-person work as much as possible. But, um, mm-hmm. but I wonder if maybe it's given us some nice options where, you know, if you need to do ADR for something, but you're traveling or excuse me, or if you know, you're working overseas or something like that, like, like maybe it's given us some new language and understanding around other possibilities for how we can make something work. And, um, you know, I, I think everyone is anxious to get back to something a little more recognizable, but, um, but I guess it's nice to have learned other possibilities. Mm-hmm. 
Cause I've seen like in TV shows now where the Zoom is now in part of the, the mm-hmm. show. And it's it's weird, but it's also how how they make it is also interesting how they put into the show and you're just seeing how, okay, they basically have a regular conversation, but they're somewhere across the world, but you don't know mm-hmm. that, but it's just like, you're just watching it. Yeah, we're all just so, there are so many things we're so used to now that we'd never even heard of, you know, not that mm-hmm. long ago. Yeah. No. Because <laughs> even then, was there a process where you, uh, a time where you felt that okay, I'm not sure that this is going to be the right move or this is, were you, you know, skeptical about, you know, having to film something in your home by yourself or having to, like you say, do ADR by yourself or just, you know, you're used to having someone there with you or having the person, you know, the camera crew around you making you feel like you're safe, feeling like, okay, I got this. I know yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I was just so thankful for a project of any kind. <laughs> And so I think, especially because social distance was so early in the mm-hmm. pandemic. I mean, we shot, my my mm-hmm. episode we shot in June, which um, mm-hmm. looking back is pretty early in, in all of this. And so mm-hmm. I think in that moment, I was just as, as intimidated as I was by some of the responsibilities. I think I was just so mm-hmm. unbelievably thankful to have something that resembled a schedule and a creative project and um all of those pros sort of far outweighed any of the cons what's one thing that you have learned being on different sets throughout your career you know with you know like i say you being on queen sugar the center manifest you know falcon the winter soldier what is something that you've taken from maybe different actors or just being on set with everybody that's such a good question because you know, not not to sound too whatever about it, but I, I hopefully you're taking something from from every experience, um, and so I'm I'm trying to come up with a good one. I mean, I think for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, though, I I really do think that all of those people that I worked with really exemplified what a warm and welcoming work environment can be, and they. You know, it was me and four actors who have been doing these kinds of Marvel projects for a decade now. And you, it would have been a bummer, but I would have understood if they had been sort of like, you know, this is our thing and it's cute that you're here, but like, this is really about us. But they Mm -hmm. made me feel like I had been there with them the whole time. And, And that goes to, too, like, I've talked about this a little bit before, but like my first day of shooting, Anthony and Sebastian came to me and they said, you have the harder job in this sequence. Do you want to do your close-ups first or last? And Mm -hmm. to see that kind of thoughtfulness exemplified isn't exactly like a lesson that anyone taught me as much as it was watching them and seeing, oh, that's such a good example of how you can lead with grace and lead with thoughtfulness and go out of your way to make people feel welcome and and everybody does better work that way i mean even you mentioned queen sugar rutina wesley is also such an amazing example of that because she you know i'm i i play a character who's interviewing her on the show for i sort of write for like a buzzfeed type place and the book that she wrote on that show i'm interviewing her for And I remember in that makeup trailer, first thing that morning, she was like, are you interviewing me? And I was like, I am. And I shook, I Mm -hmm. stuck out my hand to say, it's so nice to meet you. And she's like, nope, we hug Mm -hmm. here, bring it in. Like you're, you're family now, kiddo. And, um, Mm -hmm. and, and some of those things, again, they're, they're not direct lessons, but Mm -hmm. it's watching people lead by example can be so powerful. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get the, messages from people that used to watch uh, that watch manifest with your character a little bit yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah Man- mm-hmm. manifest has some uh some very devoted fans that uh their their new season just started i'm so excited to see what happens yes because your character was a bit out there <laughs> yeah I, he, had, he, had, he had limitless possibilities 
did you know like going into that show like what your character was going to be and how no i you know? i got cast in one episode in the first season and and i really liked mm-hmm. what i got to do in that one episode and i and i thought that mm-hmm. that episode had um I thought it was clear that there was potential for that role to come back in some way, but there was no guarantee mm-hmm. of anything. And so I, you know, did my best for that one episode. And then probably about a year later, a little less than a year, but, you know, 10 months later or so, you know, we started to get emails that said, is he available if we want to write some more for him? Um, mm-hmm. And I had, I certainly had no idea that, um, I'd be blowing up buildings and murdering people, but they, 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 <laughs> that character. they, what's also really funny about that is that Melissa, who's the lead of that show, we sort of stayed in touch here and there after I did the first episode mm-hmm. and we would sort of text ideas for what my character could be up to with her. And we sort of, mm-hmm. cause he actually in that first episode, he's very gentle with her and he's very sweet. And so we, I remember one of our ideas was like, maybe they run like a book club in Brooklyn at like a candle store or something. Um, mm. And then, you know, he's blowing up nightclubs. <laughs> yeah, so that whole episode was crazy. And I was just like, oh, okay, even the new season, I'm just like blown away how they're coming together with that. I haven't watched it yet. That whole I'm yeah. excited to. Oh, you need yeah. to watch it super super good yeah and, but I mean that was I do feel like Jeff Rake who runs Manifest I did really appreciate how he engineered for my character Isaiah in the second season there was a really cool sort of like planting of a couple seeds gently and then they paid off in that crazy way in that uh mm-hmm. nightclub exploding episode because even with that role did you take away something that you learn more about yourself or just you know in general yeah I mean I think I came out stronger at the end of it because that set was we didn't have a lot of time to shoot any of it we had to slam through a lot of that stuff really really quickly and that show often Mm. cross boards which means you're shooting multiple episodes on the same day and so there would be Mm. sort of like okay we're doing two scenes from the fourth episode then we're going to jump and do a scene from the seventh episode there was a lot Mm. of sort of fast and furious jumping around on that show. And um, I think at the end of it, I sort of felt like, okay, you got through that and you did a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I think I felt stronger and smarter at the end of it. How do you feel going into, you know, now that, you know, your episodes come <laughs> out, a lot of fan base is coming. How are you excited with this new phase of this new chapter? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you? Do you think it's a new phase in your life? Do you feel like it could potentially lead up to more? You know, not just a guest role, but a series, a series regular on a show. Yeah, I mean, from from your lips to whoever's ears to <laughs> to Kevin Feige's ears. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. It. I do feel. I think I mostly just feel sort of like curious about what what could be what could be coming and and I feel excited and it feels the um so many people have said such <laughs> such wonderful things about this character and welcoming me to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all that and um mm. you know I I hope that some good stuff shows up I'm 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 definitely I'm mostly just excited and interested to see what what could be coming down the pike. Because are, are you having any upcoming projects or you know, nothing? Some roles? Yeah, yeah, that? nothing that I'm aware of. I've, I've definitely been auditioning pretty regularly and um, mm-hmm. a lot of keeping my fingers crossed. But but you know we're also mm-hmm. still in a moment where there's not as much shooting just yet as there usually is. I still think there's. Mm-hmm. less jobs and more actors available for those jobs but um mm-hmm. you know production is definitely picking up more and more and so yeah hopefully there will be something good soon because even with the auditioning I know that sometimes it's now is are you filming mostly in your home or 100%. like is it different from okay because I was gonna say was it like 
originally did you have to like go to an extra audition or you know did you not have to send an audition tape yeah i mean i I feel like pre-pandemic there was still a good amount of taping yourself in your home or wherever if the project was you know i live in new york so sometimes if it's an la based project i was used to sending tapes or taping yourself was a pretty regular part of the job um but now it's a hundred percent of the job of audition egg and hope and hopefully that won't be the case forever i don't think it will be but but yeah it's it's a lot of uh home home performances <laughs> what's one piece of advice that you would give to to someone who may want to start entering the showbiz whether it's you know tv or you know broadway yeah that's such a good question um I almost don't know where to begin. I mean, I think that what's been one of the most helpful things for me has been, um, has been to sort of seek out other people who, what am I trying to say? Um, The small scrappy projects that I have done with friends either like small film projects or weird theater projects in closets in the East Village of New York City or something like those have been so enriching and creative and special to me and those very small things can often help lead to the bigger things sometimes much more quickly and in a much more fulfilling way than if you were like just aiming for those big things all the time. And so I guess Mm. the advice that occurs to me first, at least would be to sort of not discount those small things that you can make with your friends. Um, Mm. Because that can be the, I mean, those are almost all of my favorite experiences and Mm. those do often lead to the kinds of things that you might be fantasizing about as the bigger and better opportunities. But, um, but yeah, I I think it's easy to blow things like that off. But again, those have been Mm -hmm. so satisfying to me and that just, you know, it's a roller coaster ride. And so you have to buckle up for like very high highs and very low lows are normal for everybody. And I think if you're prepared Mm -hmm. for it to be ups and downs all the time, I think that it will deliver that. Whereas you're in big trouble if you're anticipating something that's smooth sailing. But I I think a lot (laughs) of people feel like, you know, I was the star of my high school and my college. So I'm going to move to New York or Los Angeles and naturally Mm -hmm. I'll be a star there too. And um, Mm -hmm. you're in for a lot of, uh, a lot of heartache probably. Whereas if, if you move thinking, you know, it's going to be hard, but if I can stay focused and keep working hard, maybe I can do it. I think that that is the much better mindset. Because growing up, did you feel that, did you have that sort of mindset the way you were saying like, oh, I can, you know, I moved here and, you know, I'm going to be this big star. I just had like your, you just felt like, you know, I can get a job or I, if I don't know if I'm too sure about getting a job or did you feel like it was a sort of un, I'm trying to say how much I'm trying to say this. Uh, <laughs> how did you feel just making sure like growing up that you had the mindset of how you were describing you know that oh if I come here I'm gonna be a big star but it's not in reality it's nothing like that <laughs> yeah I think I was really lucky because I grew up in a town in Florida where there was a bunch of professional theater And so the majority of my experience growing up was with professionals who would come down to Florida from New York for a couple months or from Los Angeles to do a play or to do a musical or something. Mm -hmm. And so from a really early age, I was working with professionals and just sort of absorbed, you know, their knowledge and their experiences. And so I I think I had a relatively clear-headed view of what I was getting myself into. I mean, it, it will, it has plenty to throw at you in terms of curveballs once you're actually the one doing it. But um, mm-hmm. 
but I, th- I think I, I think I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, which is so lucky. Because when you, when you finished college, were you more into Broadway or were you auditioning for a show? I was auditioning for a little bit of everything, but I, I mean, I went to, I went to mm-hmm. college for musical theater, and so my focus mm-hmm. right off the bat was pretty heavily, was pretty heavily on that. And over time, it just sort of shifted. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a difference between how you feel? when you first started into musical theater and to how you started now? In terms of how I feel about musical theater or in how I feel about like all of it? All of it. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because when I started, I was so young. I mean, I, I was nine or 10 years old. And so mm-hmm. thinking back on that, I think I didn't know anything about anything except that I was excited <laughs> to be there. Um, Mm -hmm. and that part is still true for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like hopefully over time you just accumulate more and more knowledge and more and more lessons. And and like we were saying, like a lot of it is just watching people and seeing their Mm -hmm. behavior and seeing how they lead a company or lead a set. And, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's all sort of different, but I think it is sort of the natural evolution of just having been at it for a while. Because did you watch any, was there anybody in particular that you watched growing up that you felt that you was like, okay, I can follow after them or, okay, hey, they, they, they're somebody I want to be. That's a really good question. I don't think there was like one person. I think there were, Mm -hmm. there were TV shows that I loved growing up and certainly a lot of the adults that I grew up working with impacted me. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I can't come up with just like one one person or one example. Because what were the TV shows that you felt that impacted you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think my parents, looking back, I think my parents let me watch a lot of things with them that I maybe should not have been allowed to watch. Um, And so, like, I I loved, I mean, I was, like, way too young, but I loved Allie McBeal. I loved The Practice. Mm -hmm. I loved Friends. Um, And what's been cool as I've gotten older is, like, getting to actually work with some of those people that I loved growing up. Mm -hmm. But but I I will say, I do remember watching that cast of Allie McBeal, and I think it was sort of the first time that I got to see actors who, like, in one episode got to be hilarious but they got to be dramatic and they got to be heartbreaking some of them got to sing Mm -hmm. on that show like and that cast which was you know Callista Flockhart and Peter McNichol and Greg Gurman and all these unbelievable actors um Mm -hmm. yeah I mean maybe that is my answer actually is is the (laughs) cast of Ally McBeal (laughs) <laughs> they helped shape your they've, they've shaped everything and, and I've gotten to work with a couple of them and I'm always like bombarding them with tell me everything about Ally McBeal because even that show what was that you know like you say growing up watching that with your family what was that experience like just sitting there watching that and then being able to work with some of them now it's wild I mean it, it's so far beyond what I ever 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 would have anticipated and um and and that's uh, that's so exciting and uh, those moments can feel sort of beautifully full circle in some way or just getting to tell your parents like I'm shooting with this person today how crazy is that um (laughs) so yeah that's that's been really gratifying and exciting and and even better that like I mean, it could happen anytime, but I don't have any bad stories of like, I loved this person and they were so disappointing mm-hmm. to work with. <laughs> I I only have great stories of, you know, mm-hmm. idolizing someone as a child and then getting to see how wonderful they are in person. So that that's, that's really lucky that's really- and that could change at any time. <laughs> yes, I've heard stories. <laughs> uh has your parents, when you told them about you work with Pacific people, were they always excited or were they just like, oh, okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think they're usually excited. I mean, they're, they're not show business people. And so, mm-hmm. you know, th- there are certain things that I don't know that they fully understand. But, um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're so supportive and excited, even if I don't necessarily think that they always know exactly what I'm saying. 
Yes. Well, I had such a wonderful time. You with too. You. Thank you so much. I'm so glad your phone didn't like <laughs> <Totally>. drop. <laughs> like we, I'm so glad your first Instagram yes. live went. Slowly. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Have a you great too. day. And night. I mean. <laughs> you too. I hope I'll see you soon. Have a good night. Where's the buzz? Where is the buzz? You said we used to be a single. Wow.